They are true legends in Mishmayo High School football history. Today we honor Coach Mike Rush, Lou Ochoa, Brock Corinne, Troy Kopp, and Shane Moline as they enter the Mishmayo High School Football Hall of Fame. We'll hear from Coach Chad Johnson, Coach Brett Payton, Troy Kopp, and Shane Moline. A trip down memory lane with Diablo football. I'm Paul Higgins. This is Coach's Corner, and all the action starts right now. Uh, the day couldn't be better. I know you and I were just talking that you actually got to go out and play some holes, but you're out there hustling, man. You're working hard. Tell me about this tournament and tell me about the reason behind it. Well, we started the tournament five years ago when I took over for, for Bob, and, and we wanted to build a Hall of Fame. Um, and we thought, what better way of doing it than to add a golf tournament? Uh, so, you know, we, we did a golf tournament, and then after the golf tournament's over, we're going to induct members in the Hall of Fame. The coolest part was, is we sat down as a coaching staff, and, and we selected the five, the first year, the five, like, biggest Hall of Famers that we could think of, Bob included. And they serve as kind of the board of directors. Yeah. And so every single year, they get to vote and select who comes in. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they're like the high table, if you will. And every year, you know, we say, hey, you know, who do you guys think? And they send in, here's, here's the next group of guys we think should come in. You know, this guy, that guy, whatever. So that's how we do it. And, and we don't choose, they choose. And it's kind of a really cool deal. It's kind of blown up and, and we're, we're excited about it. You know, just looking at the guys coming in, you know, coming in from golf, everyone seems like they had a really good time. And you have some really good golfers here, too. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the thing. Is some of these guys are uh, unbelievable. I mean, we got, like, golf coaches at high schools. We got scratch golfers. I mean, so yeah, I, I played a couple holes with different groups, and, and some of the guys are, like, oh, unbelievable. I mean, just – so I, I would expect – now, I will tell you this. Dove Canyon did put the pins in some tough locations today. We were playing off the whites, so that's a little closer to the pins. So they really challenged some of those guys. But I, I, I would expect the score to be something like minus 15, maybe minus 17, something like that. That to win it you know just the setting here and what you guys have set up and all the things that are auctioning off it looks beautiful but what I'm really impressed is with the helmet plaques that you guys are giving away tonight in awarding the inductees who came up with that idea for the half of the helmet well, you know, it's funny. We, we, we kind of done it for a long time with something that was before I got to. You know, Bob did it. And I, I'm, I don't know if people before him did it. Um, and I will tell you, one of our parents, the Fitch family, who is a, fa a famous family in Orange County, football family, um, you know, they, they do, that's what they do. They, you know, they'll do woodworking and do stuff like that. So the Fitch family is gracious enough to, to make our plaques for us and help us out. And we, we basically take old helmets that were sent back to us by Riddell. They, hey, these, these are done. You can't use them anymore. Okay, great. Don't throw them out. We'll use them as trophies. Yeah. And plaques. So, you know, cut them in half and the Fitch family does all that for us. And they're, they're amazing family, amazing people. And, you know, a bunch of their kids and have played through Mission VL. So we're, we're very, very excited and very gracious of the Fitch family to help us out with that. Coach, how important is this to a public school to have a tournament like this to raise money for your program? Because I know how it's, everything's getting more expensive, so your job does not become easier because you become a head coach. It becomes a little bit more difficult because you take on so many different roles. Tell me about that and how important this tournament is to the program, not just in August, September, but all the way through. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's imperative, right? If you don't fundraise as a public school guy, you're done. Um, you know, the, the public school gives you enough money to basically recondition your helmets and wash your uniforms and that's it everything else is is on you so you know we're in a big project right now trying to redo our weight room we're about three quarters of the way through um, it's, it's a phenomenal project it'll be about a half a million dollars when it's all done and and that's what things like this are for and and I think when you give fundraising an objective and a goal and people can you know visually tie in what they're giving money to and buying the gift baskets or whatever the case may be I, I think it works and so you know we're, we're, we're trying to you know get mission uh, caught up and and make it on a, a level playing field to the private schools and their facilities and in order to do that we have to fundraise yeah 
We don't have to go into all of them, but your thoughts about some of the guys that are being nominated and inducted. Obviously, they've already been nominated. They're being inducted tonight into the Michigan Valley Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, I have a little bias, I must say, because Shane Moline's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the, and the Moline family is, you know, obviously Chase is one of my coaches, and so they're, they're really special to me, so I'm, I'm really super excited to watch Shane go in. Um, you know, uh, Troy Kopp is a phenomenal quarterback. I coach quarterbacks, so that's kind of dear to my heart. But, I, you know, I'm really excited. You know, Mike Rush, as a coach, I'm a coach. So there, there, there's a lot of exciting people tonight that I'm really looking forward to hearing about their story and getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, and, 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 they're, and they deserve it. You know, those are unbelievable people and players and coaches. Uh, Mission Viejo has got an unbelievable football legacy, and, and I, I can't be more excited to see what happens tonight. I found, about, I found out about this last night at a concert, actually, <laughs> and I heard that Mike Rush was going to be inducted, and I said, I have to do a Coach's Corner on this because I mentioned to you he was my first guest on Coach's Corner wow. back whenever I started this whole thing. <laughs> so it's pretty special to have you on here and to, to welcome us. Thank you so much. I wish you all the luck. Obviously, anything we can do to help you get the word out, we will. But congratulations, and it's going to be a great night ahead. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it, man. It's, it's wonderful having you guys here, and I, I can't wait for this to kick off. Well, we're just getting started because up next, Coach Brett Payton joins me as we continue to look back at Diablo lore and the players coming into this year's Mission Viejo High School Football Hall of Fame. Troy Kopp back to pass. He's being rushed pretty heavily. Gets this one off. Scott Parrott, touchdown, Mission Viejo. Eric Ekdahl lining up for a 44-yard field goal. Plenty of distance, and it's good. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Ah, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. in my lane? No, not at all. Are you not paying attention? Are you texting? I was just checking in with my mom. I was telling her that I thought we'd be home by six. It's okay. There's enough time. Just pay attention. I'm not even halfway through my text. There's no way. I'm not even going to look up. My babies are in the car. You have to pay attention. It's just supposed to be a quick text. I'm so sorry. Johnson, but he said you're really the man behind this whole event. Tell me about your role and, and how important this event is to Mission Day of Football. Well, I, I, we started it many years ago, and I think the biggest thing that came out of it is uh, in the valley here, everybody knows everybody. You know, um, guys know each other from other schools, from the days that started in the very beginning of this. And I think that was the most important thing is to get that, that tradition, that that th those those guys that played in the past and bring them right in to the modern day program. I think that's the biggest reason why we started this. We started, you know, we have Louis Ochoa today in the 1979 class. That's a big deal. And now we do it is so that each guy will, they'll nominate out of their classes so it expands. So that even makes it bigger than it, you know, than anything. It ends up tying in the past with the, with the future, which I think is the biggest part of this. To me, it's like a reunion, too, because I'm seeing guys that I haven't seen in 25 years that I covered back in the day when they were in high school. And I know you get that sense of feeling, too, almost like a fraternity. Oh, yeah. And the great thing is, like, you'll have Louis Ochoa playing next to Brock Horn. Brock Horn's in 1982. Then you have, after that, you have, you have I mean, how can you not have the different quarterbacks that we've had and then you have uh, Shane Moline and then Shane doesn't realize the history of 79 and then he ends up they're talking and there's a there's a there's a loop in the past and it ends up being something where they all get tied in being Diablos. Your thoughts about running a program like this with Mission Viejo we, we talked about it being a public school and and coach said hey we got enough money to clean our uniforms and redo our helmets every year other than that you know we've got to go out and fundraise and we've got to really put the pedal to the metal 
as a coach, how difficult is that? Because you're running a defense, but also you're running somewhat of a business as well. Yeah, I mean, when we when we started this, it was something I kind of took on because I knew I was a tie-in from the past. I, you know, I, I I'm even saying I'm a, I'm an El Toro grad, right? But I came over with Bob Johnson, and then I hit. I, but I also know that whole tying in those groups, that 82 class, the 81 class that was uh, mission. Half those guys I knew as as a youngster. So that's what people don't realize. There's a lot of tie-in, and everybody kind of knows in our community. And that I think that's the biggest thing is this brings back community to each other, and that's more important than anything. Your thoughts about the guys that are being inducted today? I, I, I talked about Mike Rush. He was my first guest on Coach's Corner. I remember call, um, covering Troy and Higashi and, and all those guys that I'm just seeing today. I know Higashi's not in it yeah. today. But, you know, you, you, you think about those guys, Moline, obviously, and, and it's like I can see them running down the football field. Yeah, and, you know, the, the thing I think it is is it kind of brings back the – the days of, of glory and those guys watching them play and they're like, you know, there'll be 12 guys in a foursome and they're just, they're talking about, you know, you can, you, hey, I remember when you couldn't get a first down and they're just making fun of each other, but they're also just enjoying it, rehashing that past. But then in the same breath tonight, you'll hear all, oh, they're going to tie into the future and that's that's the best part. We're, we're pulling them back in and I think that's the most important part of the whole deal. You mentioned it. It's, uh, there's nothing like Friday night football. I know there's a lot of games on Thursday night, but let's call it Friday night football. You just mentioned it, pulling guys back in. They kind of they see these guys, and maybe they haven't seen them in a long time, so they're going to want to sit next to them in the stands on a Friday night. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that I'm surprised at, and this is just kind of a little more off the cuff, is how in shape all these guys are. I can't believe how they've all come back, and they look fabulous, and just are wanting to be a part of it, and are so thankful to us to bring that back in, and have that sense of alumni. They were talking, this is like a fraternity. That's what we want. That, that's what this program is about, and I think, I think that's a fantastic selling point just for them, yeah. you know? One additional question for you, Coach. I know that you've been doing this a long time, and you gotta still be having fun, right? Oh, I, I love it. I mean, right now it's my 39th year coaching. I mean, it's been a long time doing this, but uh, you know, it's I think it's the the youth. It's also hearing um, the, the the modern day the kids nowadays them actually putting in the time, doing the things they're supposed to do. It's no different than the old days. I, I people keep trying to tell me the game's changing. It's it's not changing. It's still about, you know, getting off blockers, tackling, doing the things you're supposed to do. I'm just a defensive guy talking right now. That's what we talk about. It's nothing more than that. Yeah. Well, congratulations. The pageantry of tonight, the, the plaques and all the items up for auction, the moms here, the cheerleaders are here. You guys did a fantastic job and good luck. Thank you. Thank you for coming here and covering this. It's a pretty big deal. Thanks. Yes, it is, and the deal gets better. As up next, I talk with quarterback Troy Kopp. The two-time South Coast League champion had a great high school and college career. He's now a coach and more humble than ever and thankful that he was a Diablo. Talk about his awards. He doesn't like this right now, I can tell you. He's very, very humble. Uh, he's a wee person, a family guy, uh, and just he diverted all his accolades to his teammates, to his coaches, and to our staff. Um, obviously, as a quarterback, you need to be a team leader. Well, Tony, if you look at his records on all three levels, high school, college, and pro, he was the guy. And when I asked a few of his teammates, hey, what do you think of, you know, some traits about Troy? And they quoted this to me, and they said, you know, he was very inspiring as a leader, but he was a quiet fighter. And I really believe Troy's determination and his hard work and dedication moved him to a couple levels higher. Once again, when we come back, I'll talk with the true Diablo legend, Troy Kopp.
If you love them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Roll that ball, Diane. Woo! You got this! When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Ah, there it is. Keep going with it. Leah! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Troy, it seems like just yesterday I was covering you. You go back in 87, 88, starting quarterback at Mishmeo High School. Do you re remember like those days in practices, those days leading up to the games? And then did you ever think you would be here now? Um, yes, I, I do remember those times. And I, I, the last couple of months, I've been able to sit and reflect on those times. And it's really kind of opened up, opened up my mind to what we experienced as a team back then in 87 and 88. And, I was surrounded by great teammates, great coaching, and you know we were in a great league that involved some great rivals, and uh, we took a lot of pride in trying to be at the top of that league, and, and fortunately we were able to my junior and senior year. Yeah. Is it humbling to know that you're being recognized today and all these guys are out here as one of the inductees that you're going into the Hall of Fame with Mission Viejo? How humbling is that? Well, it's very humbling uh, for me. It, it's truly an honor. Um, I, I truly feel like I'm a representation of our team. So, um, you know, it's about my teammates and my coaches. You're not going to be able to be recognized with this kind of honor without uh, great teammates and great coaches in, in a great community. I was, I was fortunate to have uh, some great teammates, parents that really also um, made a big influence and really helped me a lot too. When you look back at those days, do you remember the stands were full on both sides, and then there were people on the hillside too. Do you remember they're sitting on the hills watching you guys play football? And it seems like that was an electric time in South Orange County for football. Now it's changed a little bit, but do you, you look back on, on those Friday nights and realize how many people were watching you then on a high school football field? Well, there were very special times. Um, you know, it was a it was a thing where we we lived in Saddleback Valley in a community that had several great high schools and you know as a young child or growing up you 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 get to know the other players from other schools and um talented kids and then you get to compete against them in high school and um it was it was a lot of fun and we took a lot of pride and and respectfully in competing against them and you know down the road it's it's really um a big reward to be able to you know still say uh, we were league champs because it was a tough league you know I was when I was a junior uh, Todd Marinovich was playing as a senior and Brett Johnson and some great quarterbacks that I competed against and we played against some great great teams and great coaches you know uh, Bob Johnson was at El Toro then and Dick Enright Eric Patton were at Capistrano Valley and it was a special time um, and when the you know we were Really, if you were the best team in the South Coast League, you are probably the best team in the county, you know, so. No doubt about that. And then you mentioned coaching a couple times. You're coaching now. Yeah, I've been blessed. I never thought I'd be doing this, but I'm going on my 21st season as a coach. Um, I've, I've had a real good journey with that, and I hopefully will be doing this to the day I die. So um, I love working with high school kids. It's fun working with them and trying to help mold them into more than just good football players, but hopefully they're going to be great parents, fathers, you know, and, and great in the community, and that's ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. So, yeah. Before I let you go, I have to ask you, since you now are coaching and you have been for so long, what's the biggest piece of advice, the nugget that you give these young quarterbacks coming up? Well, you know, nowadays kids are preparing all year round, and in order to keep up with that, you kind of have to. Um, the amount of stuff that we're doing now with high school quarterbacks is, is amazing. Uh, the offensive schemes, the things we're asking them to do, you know, calling plays, what, calling protections, understanding where to go with the ball and all that stuff. It, it's really advanced and, um, you know, it, we got to just keep adjusting to the times. But um, the kids are the kids are great and we just, I find that I try to provide, provide them a lot of time. You need a lot of time in practice to be able to become pretty good, yeah. Yeah, well, you were pretty good, too. So congratulations on being inducted into the Michigan Football Hall of Fame. No one more deserving of it than you. Congratulations. Paul, I appreciate it. Thank you.
It was truly a pleasure talking to Troy. Up next, another Diablo legend in Shane the Train Moline. He was an amazing running back. He scored 38 touchdowns his junior year and has the most touchdowns in a career at Mission Viejo with 79. Back of the year in 2003, Offensive Player of the Year in 2004, and Most Valuable Player in 2005. You get the idea. He was good, very good. And he's next. I'm Paul Higgins, and this is Coach's Corner. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leah. <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. You know, Shane, it's funny because I recognize you guys in uniforms. I didn't realize how handsome you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blessed to have, you know, the, the parents and the genes that I have, and I have a beautiful wife and two beautiful girls. My oldest daughter is Emerson Moline. She's six, and my youngest is Grayson Moline, who will be four in September. So I, I, I'm blessed to lead the life that I do. Um, I'm very happy, you know, the football career that I have and with the Mission Viejo yeah. and UCA with my brothers. and. It really couldn't have been any better for me. I mean, I look back at it now and I'm blessed to have the experiences and the relationships that I had during that time. Shane, how cool is this? Uh, you know, golf tournament, your name is in there, it's on it. You know, it's going to be forever. Mark 2022, you go into the Mission Viejo Football Hall of Fame with some great people, I might add, including a, a former excellent coach in Mike Rush. Quite an honor, I'm sure. So when, when I look back, when, when Brett Payton called me a couple, a couple months ago and said, you're going to get inducted this year, I, I looked back at my career and, and I just realized how special it was, the career I had individually, but as a collective whole, the people I played with, Mark Sanchez, Conrad Rulin, my brother Chase, Jed Collins, Marty Tadman, Nick Reed, you know, Justin Williams, the list goes on and on. It was a very special time that I don't know if I fully understood at that time, but as I got older, I understood how grateful I am to, to be to a program like that and have a full ride scholarship at UCLA with my my brothers uh, and kept that, that wave going. It was just a great ride and I, I look back and my life wouldn't be the same today without football. So I'm super blessed to have those experiences and play football with my brothers and have the parents that I do. Um, so I'm just super grateful for the life that I have. What's the reaction that you get from other players that and other guys that you haven't seen in, in a little while when they first see you here because they might not have seen you since 2006, 2007. You know, I think, I think Chad Johnson's done a great job at, at keeping the, the tradition alive and bringing back ex-players and, you know, you know um, congratulating for their career and having the Hall of Fame and, and incorporating them in, in the future growth of, the, of the, um, the program. I think Chad, you know, my brother Chase Moline, coaches as well but I think it's great that he he does that and incorporates the old players who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame with the future growth because you know when Bob Johnson was here it was tradition never graduates and it turned out to be true like we've had a great program you know before I was here with Robbie Dubois and Ryan Perdrell through my tenure and then you know even past what my brothers and I did at that school and I wouldn't be as successful as I'm today without those experiences. So just being super grateful. And I, you know, Chad Johnson has done a great job to keep Bob Johnson's tradition alive and keep that you know, great high school pedigree alive. And I'm sure the players today are having great experiences and will be able to go further in life because that discipline, you know, football experience and life experience to drive them to, you know, achieve more. Right. Got to ask you, you were mentioning that that team that you were on arguably and you can say it, was one of the best teams in the country at that time. So I will say, I think that 4 5 season when, you know, Mark Sanchez was a quarterback, Chase Moline was, you know, offense, defense, superstar. I was a running back. Connor Rulin was a tight end. And a laundry list of players. I think we were arguably the best team in the country, if not the best team Mission Viejo has ever had. That was a year that I have multiple records within Mission Viejo. I look back at it when uh, Coach Brett Payton told me I was going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. I had 42 touchdowns that year, you know, the most career points because of that year, the most you know points within that season. Um, it was all because of that year that I was a part of. And it wasn't just me. It was, you know, Mark, Conrad, Nick Reed, Justin Williams, Chase Moline, Connor Rulin. Like, there's a laundry list of guys who probably like six to 
12 guys went D1 that year, and a, and a handful made it to the NFL, had exceptional careers. Very exceptional to be part of that, that career, that pedigree, and um, I'm just grateful to be part of that, that wave, and um, my life wouldn't be the same without it. Awesome, dude. 42 touchdowns, and they were taking you out at halftime. So uh, congratulations on that, because you might have had 60. But uh, congratulations on being inducted to the Hall of Fame today, and uh, enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. We, we, they joked about, you know, if we would have played full games throughout that tenure, like what could have been. But we were so exceptional at that time, and, you know, we, we had those, you know, that, you know, that lead during those times that I was pulled out at halftime or third quarter that I didn't play those full games and nor did anyone else. Chase played both ways and he was exceptional. But how many touchdowns could have had? Who knows, right? <laughs> but we were it was a it was a great experience at that time. Very grateful for it. And Bob Johnson did a great job and Chad Johnson is continuing that tradition and um, it's a great program. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That was awesome, man. <laughs> the Mission Viejo 5th Annual Hall of Fame Ceremony was an awesome event. The dinner, auction, and speeches throughout the night were special, sincere, and really gave the feeling of community embracing all Diablos. Entering the Hall of Fame with Troy and Shane was Coach Mike Rush, a Diablo to the core that entered God's arms way too early. I miss him. Also inducted was Lou Ochoa from the years 1976 to 1979. A three-year varsity letterman, all South Coast League defense in 78 and 79, South Coast League Defensive Player of the Year in 79, and a senior year scholar athlete. Rounding out the five inductees was Brock Corinne, a Diablo from 1979 to 1981. He has a long list of accolades, including Diablo of the Year in 1981, but he's most proud of the banner year of 1981, winning league, CIF, and state. Well, congratulations goes out to the class of 2022. I thoroughly enjoyed going down memory lane that reminds me of my journey and all the outstanding football in South Orange County. I thank you for watching. This has been Coach's Corner. I'm Paul Higgins. So long for now, and we'll see you again real soon.